Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love making costumes and Halloween as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome costumes without breaking the bank and maybe even using some items you already have at home. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're doing awesome. We are headed into the official Halloween season, and if you haven't already decided what you're going to be, you may want to start thinking about that because it's going to come upon us pretty fast. In today's episode, we will be recreating the one and only Queen of Samba, Carmen Miranda. Now, if you're younger out there and you don't know who Carmen Miranda is, you may also know her as the Chiquita Banana Lady. You're not wrong. Let's get started. Carmen Miranda. As you can see, I pretty much have the whole setup. You can look at this table and tell that we'll be doing Carmen Miranda. I've got the fruit, I've got the headdress. I lucked out and I found a vintage homemade Carmen Miranda whole getup. It was the skirt, the headdress, a pair of matching underoos for $36, which was amazing at a secondhand shop here in downtown St. Pete. I went ahead and bought my own top. It's just a red satin top. I got this off of Amazon. It was pretty cheap too. And I got my own underoos because these may not fit me. <laughs> so I got a red ensemble for underneath. And then I had these cuffs. They're arm cuffs. I'm gonna add some ruffles to match the skirt. You're gonna wanna pull out pretty much all the beaded jewelry and gaudy costume jewelry you have for Carmen Miranda. This is what I pulled out. It's very colorful. She was like the Mr. T of females. She wore a lot around her neck. She had a lot of jewelry, a lot of bracelets, big earrings, very flamboyant. We're gonna go ahead and get started. showed pictures of the finished headpiece and this is it going all the way around. I didn't go all the way to the bottom as you can see that's going to make the headdress a little lighter weight for you to carry around on your head. It still looks great and a couple things I wanted to tell you about the headdress. When you're making a headdress it's going to be important for you to purchase fruit that is made of foam or lightweight plastic. You're not going to want wax fruit or solid plastic fruit because it's going to be too heavy and it's not going to stick as good when you're gluing it onto the headpiece. So foam or hollow plastic fruit is all I would use. And really I would use the foam over the hollow plastic even because you don't know if the plastic might melt with the hot glue gun. Mine didn't. Some of these are plastic and some are foam but I did have wax fruit as well right here. It's heavier and it's really smooth. So um, it actually does not glue well onto the headpiece. So just be, be mindful of that. I chose the fruit headpiece. Carmen Miranda would rock feathers. She had some that looked like chandeliers, all kinds of stuff. You really can make a Carmen Miranda headpiece with almost anything. She was a hat maker by trade when she was living in Brazil and it really kind of carried into her career as Carmen Miranda, the showgirl. She had many hats of all different kinds of mediums, flowers, feathers, fruit, crystals, you know, you name it. 
I chose to go with the fruit because a lot of people don't know who Carmen Miranda is, especially the younger generations. And going with the fruit, they're still gonna recognize you possibly as the Chiquita Banana Lady because <laughs> that's been around for ages. I think that I think it's still the Chiquita logo, if I'm not mistaken. So that way, if they don't recognize you as Carmen Miranda, at least you would be recognized as the Chiquita Banana Lady. But you can really do anything you want. It's just you're more likely to be mistaken for just a typical showgirl without the iconic fruit. But if you're okay with that, or if you think people will recognize you as Carmen, go ahead and do it, you know, just use whatever you want. Another thing was when you go online to Amazon and you're trying to put together a Carmen Miranda costume, they don't have many Carmen Miranda options available, either that or they don't know what it is. They have a lot of Spanish inspired dance outfits, such as a flamenco dancer, which is actually from Spain. You're not going to want to purchase this for Carmen Miranda because this is not the style. And Mexican folklorico, that's totally different from Brazilian samba. So these two looks are not going to work for a Carmen Miranda look. But I did do some shopping for you. There was this great skirt that would work perfect for Carmen Miranda. It comes in a whole bunch of different colors. And you can get this on Amazon. Or you can do a wrap skirt like what I'm using would work uh, with the ruffles, the wrap skirt. This one wraps around and shows the leg. I'm sure you know what I mean by that. But it kind of ties on the side and it wraps around. This would work for Carmen Miranda as well, obviously, if you can find one. But this skirt that I showed you is perfect for Carmen Miranda and it's really reasonably priced too. As far as tops go, you can do anything from a bikini top and you could just kind of bedazzle it or design it some kind of way, add sequins, you can add rhinestones, just whatever you want to make it go with your outfit. Or you can do one of these tops, which I saw on Amazon. They're all pretty reasonably priced and what's great about them is they're off the shoulder tops that already have sleeves. So if you wanted to, you could just add ruffles to the sleeves that are already there and just choose a lightweight fabric so that it's not weighing down the sleeves. Add your own ruffles onto the shirt and there you have a Carmen Miranda top. I personally just, <laughs> I'm not a very thin girl so I'm not gonna do the, go those routes. Um, my, the top that I purchased actually covers more of my stomach. It also comes in several different colors. And for the headdress, a lot of people ask me, well, why didn't you show the whole thing? It's literally all I did was just start hot gluing on the fruit. That was it. You're not gonna have the same headpiece that I have because this is a vintage Carmen Miranda homemade costume that I bought in a secondhand store. But you can get one of these options from Amazon and add your fruit onto it and it's gonna be the same thing. These are great materials to adhere to hot glue. I really liked the one with the flower on the top. So you can use either one of these and just start hot gluing your fruit on it. Please do not do this unless you're doing Carmen Miranda as a joke. Do not buy these foam headpieces because they look like crap and $49.99, are you kidding me? So, buyer beware, don't go that route. And the headband with the fruit on it, sorry, not good enough. So, <laughs> just do this. You're not gonna end up spending a whole bunch of money. And another thing with this costume, I've been putting this costume together since last year. I just buy little bits and pieces at a time. So if you get started on your costume early enough and you're just spending $20 or $10 or $15 here and there, then it's no big deal. You can have a fabulous costume by October. It is only May right now. You have plenty of time. For these, I just used extra material I had at the house. It looks perfect. It's the same. I followed the pattern on the skirt, red, yellow, orange, and it looks perfect. So this was just extra material I had that I used for my ruffles. If you're saving your costume material when you create costumes, just have a bin 
with extra material and you'll have it around for when you need to do projects like this. Let's get started with our makeup. This is an easy one. Carmen Miranda. We're ready to do our makeup. As you can see, I did put on some of my costume. I've got a lot of jewelry to put on. And just so that it's easier, I put on basically my pantyhose, my bottom, and my top, and some earrings. Now all I gotta do is put on all of my bracelets and rings and necklaces, and then we'll be ready to go. But for the makeup, it's very simple. She really didn't wear a lot of eyeshadow or anything, so I'm just noticing kind of shadow on her face probably just natural shadow. It was basically brows, eyeliner, lashes, blush, and lips. That's it. So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start shading my face first just to give myself a little bit of a canvas to work on and just make me a little more non-American <laughs> looking. I'm just taking a brown, uh, a brown color from my contour section of my palette and I'm just going to frame my face. Carmen Miranda was born in 1909. And just to give you an idea, Lucille Ball was born in 1911. So Carmen Miranda goes way back. She was born in Northern Portugal, but at a very young age moved to Brazil. And her talents became recognizable early on to the industry. So she first started singing on Brazilian radio and then she went to Brazilian films there where she was from and at a very young age she caught the eye of a big producer and probably around her 20s moved to America now prior to moving to America she had gotten much acclaim in Brazil she was very well loved respected and really put up on a pedestal she was actually I think the most popular performer to ever come out of Brazil. I'm sure there's been some since, but none quite made the iconic impression that she did when she was here. She was quite the anomaly. So Carmen Miranda then moves to America and receives the same success here. She was in films. One included the gangs all here. Now at the time, she wasn't just a performer. She was kind of an artist as well. She was a hatter. She would create these hats made out of feathers and different mediums. All these different mediums she would use to create these elaborate hats that would just tower on her head. She was just a very small woman. Her height and weight, she was very petite, but she'd have these huge, beautiful headpieces like a showgirl. So in the 1940s, she was like one of the most respected and popular acts in America in the whole United States. In fact, I think she was the highest paid female performer between the 40s and the 1950s. She would frequently perform at New York's Copacabana Club, which still exists today. And they even use her image on the Copacabana nightclub sign. But coming to America may not have been the best move for her as far as her lifestyle. When she was in Brazil, she was kind of innocent and she was still very young. She hadn't been corrupted by American culture yet. And when she came to America, she got even more provocative. She started getting into things she shouldn't have been getting into. She was a little more promiscuous. She was in all these films, but she was kind of typecast to be that Brazilian hot showgirl chick in all of her films but it still was very popular among American society. It was in The Gang's All Here where she became known for her eccentric hats, primarily the fruit hat, which is what we're doing today. So she was enjoying all of this success and of course loved by all the men and because of her, you know, she was cute. She was petite, she was provocative, she was a little promiscuous and the guys loved it but the problem was these costumes she would wear I mean we're talking about necklaces upon necklaces upon necklaces and all this jewelry and it was very heavy and so were the hats that she made 
they were quite literally weighing her down. Between that and her busy work schedule, it was just a battle, just trying to stay alive enough to perform. So she started taking barbiturates. She started drinking heavily and smoking heavily. Now she didn't even start drinking and smoking until she was 30 years old. But she would do all these things just to try and cope with her very busy schedule and stardom and all of this stuff. In her 30s, at some point, she went back to Brazil and they had grown to be very displeased by her behavior. She wasn't the same. She was Americanized. She was on all these drugs. And that was not indicative of their culture. And I guess they were even displeased that she was representing Brazil and she was behaving in this manner. So she did a charity event in Brazil while she was there during this time in her 30s and she actually got booed off stage, which must have been devastating for her going back to her home and being received that way. So she came back to America and things just got worse for her. She kept up with the barbiturates and the heavy drinking and the heavy smoking and eventually it killed her. On August 4th, 1955, at the age of 46, she was found dead and had suffered from a massive heart attack. But her impact on Brazilian and American culture remains today. She's actually very popular among the gay community. They still really look up to her. And um, of course, her elaborate costumes don't make her any less memorable. I really think she was awesome. I mean, I know what it's like wearing a costume, even just all night but she was wearing it almost 24 hours a day, every day. I can't even imagine the discomfort that she must have been feeling. So that's a little bit about Carmen Miranda. If you're unfamiliar with the Copacabana, you remember the song by Barry Manilow? The Copa, Copacabana. And you're welcome, because that song will be stuck in your head for the rest of the day. <laughs> But um, it's written about the Copacabana nightclub where she performed, and it's an iconic song. So now that we're all bronzed, let's do our eyebrows. She had what I would call a pork chop eyebrow. It's kind of thicker, and, and then it goes very thin. I'm trying my hardest not to make it look like my eyebrow. But my eyebrows kind of do that naturally, too. And there she is. We're gonna go a little thinner in the arch. Now we're just gonna do our other eye. Now we wanna line our waterline with black. Then we're going to put on our liner. I use Maybelline waterproof liquid liner. I've been using it for years. It's a brush applicator. You can use whatever liner you have. I, you can even use a pencil if you're good at using a pencil on your upper lid. You can use a pencil, whatever you have. Like I said, this for makeup, it doesn't require much. It's mostly stuff we already have, so. Just like that, whatever you, whatever way you do a cat eye, works. Just a little bit of a cat eye. It's not too dramatic. She was mostly just really naturally beautiful. She had gorgeous skin. She was she was actually fair for a Brazilian. I would think they would be a little bit darker complected, but she was actually pretty fair skinned. I don't know much about Brazilian culture because I've never been there. Maybe they are fair complected. If you're from Brazil, let me know in the comments down below. I think I used brown instead of black by accident. So this is how we're doing our eye. Just a simple cat eye and a little bit underneath. And I'm gonna put my mascara on and finish this eye and then I'm gonna go do my other one. It's hard to do on camera. I still don't have the proper setup for the entire look, but I'm still trying to give you a bit of a step-by-step -step as I go. While I'm off camera, I'll go ahead and put my lashes on too, because that lash face is not too cute. 
it's not very Carmen Miranda so oh and I was gonna tell you guys if you have been tuning in and you've been with me for a couple years first of all thank you very much I really appreciate all my subscribers we're not quite there yet but we're still working on it but every one of you counts and I'm so pleased that you enjoy my content that said if you've been with me a while you know that I usually do two costumes a week in October and this year's just been a little bit more trying economically my husband's been out of a job for a few months and um, you know just me working as a cook does not pay the bills very good we're okay but it's just kind of put a little bit of a hitch in our getty up so in October I will be doing a costume a week but I just I can't I can't really see myself being able to do two a week and next year we will resume if we can the two a week in October it's still gonna be awesome I have a lot of really cool things coming up big things so <laughs> I'm kind of working on like three projects at a time just to get them done because it's a lot of work but they're gonna be really cool and things you might want to try I'm gonna put my other eye on and I'll be back I think she looked pretty good <laughs> I'm as Brazilian as I'm gonna get <laughs> So I need to take my black, I'm gonna take my brown and just do a little darken my mole I have. I think it's very Carmen Miranda. I think she had one, but maybe not. It's just the Cali touch. <laughs> Ain't nothing more 40s than a mole. <laughs> okay. And I'm just gonna line my lips. Now Carmen Miranda had a bow lip, much like Lucille Ball. So we're gonna go dip down with our liner up and over and above our lip line. I think the bow lips were very 1940s too. I don't know who started the trend, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Might have been Carmen, cause she came a little bit before Lucy. You know, there was the episode of I Love Lucy called Be A Pal, where she dressed as Carmen Miranda or Carmen Miranda like and now we're just gonna fill in and to fill in I'm using my NYX smooth smooth whip I love this stuff this is such a nice lipstick we are Carmen Miranda let's get on all this jewelry and our costume all dressed up and ready for photos Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's episode. Carmen Miranda is still an inspiration to all of us today, even more than a hundred years later. And she will always be an iconic person to portray at any event, cosplay convention. Everybody knows who Carmen Miranda is. And if you don't, you should. Anyway, that does it for today's episode. If you haven't already, like I said, there's big things to come. So you may want to subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and like, leave a comment. All is appreciated. And I'll see you next time.